Hello everyone, welcome, welcome to my YouTube channel. It's time for another, another little video and I thought we'd do another journal page. Be just because, just to mix it up a little bit because we've done cards for a while and just thought we'd mix it up a bit with a journal page. Now, um, a couple of videos ago, I did this journal page, which was a complete spread. And then my recent one was this journal page, this journal spread in the browns and the blues. And what I thought is I'll go backwards to my book, the front of my book. So this is the front page of my book. As you can see, there's the there's the front cover and that's the front page. Now, as you can see, when I when I decorated this page here, some of the purple's gone through here. That never worries me. You can, I've had, I added copy of paper below and you can add masking tape sort of here down your seam if you wish, if you're getting too much moisture, but I just don't bother. Now, because I've got that bit of purple on there, I'm just going to work with it. It's got purple on there, it's fine. I'll, I'll get it to work, I'll get it to work with my design. Just put that ink pad away. So I'll get it to work with what I've got. And I'm going to use the Broken Circle stencil again, mainly because I used it in the previous one and it was on my desk and I wanted to show how you can make it look completely different. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to use the colours Wilted Violet and Twisted Citron. And I'm using Wilted Violet because it'll go with this colour here. It just means then it works with my page. So what I'm going to do is grab my spritzer bottle, which I didn't grab. And then what I, and the other thing I wanted to point out is in the last two videos, I've done the complete spread. On this occasion, I'm just going to do this one page. You don't always have to do a complete spread that has to be two pages. So what I'm going to do is do one page and then it, it just means that I'm showing you a, a variety each time. I'm putting a piece of copier paper just underneath my page just while I work and just on the side here let me just move up a little bit. I'm going to take my broken circle stencil and this time I'm going to add the twisted citron distress oxide ink to my stencil. And I'm just applying it direct to the stencil. And then I'm going to take my wilted violet. If you're doing this kind of thing, always start with the lightest colour first, just to, pre just to prevent any contamination. The other thing you need to remember is, when you're working with a stencil, let me just grab a piece of kitchen roll. When you're working with a stencil, make sure that you haven't gone right to these edges here. Because if you've gone right to these edges here, you're going to get a straight line. So off camera now, I'm going to spritz my stencil with water. Now I'm working on a card that's like a, a watercolour card. So it'll work quite nicely on here. I don't want that hair. I've always got a hair from somewhere. So what I'm going to do is just place that just onto my background. And I'll just use the kitchen roll just to allow that to rest on there and to soak up any excess moisture that might seep through those gaps. Now, I'm always aware that, that some ladies and gentlemen don't know how to break that open space. They're frightened of starting in the journal. And what I always say is find a way to break that open space so add a bit of stenciling add a touch of background text add a little bit of texture paste add something that breaks that that open space for you so that you don't feel as intimidated by the open space i can see that i've soaked up some moisture there and also when you're doing this technique don't be in a rush just to lift that stencil up give it time for that to soak in just so that you've got a reasonable background. So I'm just going to mop that up just because I don't want 
I don't want too much moisture on there. Just so you can see, we've got a beautiful, beautiful background. Let me just, now if you've still got some ink on there, you can make a second generation print if you wish. It's entirely up to you if you want to make that second generation print. You could add the second generation print to the top of your page if you wished. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the wilted violet now, just take a little bit of that and I'm just going to remove that copy of paper. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that, just a little bit of that wilted violet just around my page, treating it no different than I would a card. So just adding that, just giving it a little bit of, just a little bit of, of colour and just, just a little bit on there. There we go, just to sort of outline my page a little bit, just to give it a little bit of colour. So this is how I placed it down. So I'm going to see if I can line it up a little bit, just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is take a little bit of the purple. Just take a little bit of this purple. Let me see how that's looking. Let's see if I can... Let me just lift that up and see how it's taking. Oh, yes. So I'm just going, I've sort of lined it up. It's not properly lined up. But what I want to do is just in a few areas, just add a little bit more depth of this purple. Just to give a little bit more, a little bit more touch of purple. So I'm going over the areas that I'm adding the stencil just a couple of times, just to add a real pop of the purple so this time I'm using the stencil and I'm filling in the gaps whereas when I put it on the stencil and I added the color you sort of get the negative so what I've got then is I've got some of that purple that's a little bit more intense in color oh I forgot my stamp that I wanted what am I like where's it gone then I want this stamp set and I want this stamp set here with the bird feather. And I want to take this background stamp because this will add me some lovely background stamping exactly as that in the background. And I'm going to use my Distress Oxide ink. Now you'll often see people press their stamps onto the ink pad like that. Now that's absolutely fine if you're a confident stamper and you don't press too hard. I always recommend that you take the ink pad to the stamp. If you're a confident stamper and you know that you're not going to press too hard, then that's absolutely fine. You can take your stamp to your ink pad. If you're not a confident stamper and you press too hard, you're gonna end up with ink all bleeding around here, which doesn't help. So I'm just going to add some of that stamping. And what, what the good thing about this is that it adds a little bit more intensity of that purple. Just gives it a little bit more intensity. And this text works beautiful. I'm just going to bring it around. But this is why I add text stamps. Mainly because if you're frightened... Of breaking that page if you start with your text stamps or a stencil it's always a good way to break that gap so now I'm not frightened now because I've broken that gap I've got some layers I've got my stamping that echoes the stenciling and I've got the stenciling in the background and I've now broke the page, which really helps. I like the fact that I've now broke the page. Now, what you need to do when you're using a Distress Oxide, just make sure that you just give that a wipe. 
just because if you leave that oxide ink on there and then you go to stamp with your Versafine Claire Nocturne, it then it leaves a film because it's like a chalky finish, so it leaves a it leaves a film. So let's just leave that out because I may not have finished with that yet. Right. What I'm going to do now is use my flock together stamp. And I have to say, I absolutely adore this crow. Well, of course I do. That's why I designed it. But I think the crow will make quite a statement on here. So I love this. It's a lovely, strong image. And I just adore the way he came out. So what I'm going to do is just stamp him out. Just him personally. So we need some white card. And you won't believe it, but I actually, I actually tidied my craft room. And then I had to stumble for some white card there because I just couldn't quite find any. So what I'm going to do is use my um, Versafine Claire and I'm making sure I've got my most, most recent ink pad, which says the 3rd of May. So I know that that's quite a, a newish ink pad. So I know then I'm not using an ink pad that has got less, it's less juicy. I'm using a good juicy ink pad because this bird has got quite a bit of detail on there. And it's that the actual crow I want that I want to cut out. Let's just move this out of the way. Let's just take our crow. And I love how he came out. Absolutely love him. He's got some real character about him. And, and it's a nice, strong image. So I'm just allowing that ink just to sit on there, just to give it time just to rest on the card. I'm not giving myself much space to actually lift my acrylic block, but that's standard practice for Tracy. Let's just know, we'll take it off for now. I was going to say we'll use the other bits in a minute. Grab my scissors. And it's such, such a powerful image. And it's a wonderfully strong focal image for my design and sometimes you can have him just in black and white and you don't need anything more adding to him so that's what I love about him just cut that out Again, nothing complicated, nothing at all complicated to cut out. Now I'm going to put things at the base of him. So I don't need to worry too much because normally if I'm not putting things at the base of him, I'll I'll sort of cut in zigzags just so it looks like it's it's more it's more natural. But because I'm adding bits to him, it doesn't really really matter because I'm adding some leaves beh behind below him but a really really good strong image there and I'm just going to reiterate the dots in his eye just so that you can see that let's lift that up a little bit for you just so that you can see that I just think he is wonderful absolutely wonderful and it's great because sometimes you might only want to do a single journal page. So why not? Why not do a single journal page? Right. Do I want to stick him down yet? This is what I'm like all the time. Do I want to stick him down? Do I not? Do I... Um, where's my black pen? Now I want to grab I want you to grab your circles that I always ask you to cut out. And I want you to decide. I've not stuck him down yet. I want you to decide what, what circle you're going to add. So I think I'm going to add a circle there. And I'm going to use my black micron pen. And I'm going to draw a circle. 
just to spotlight him a little bit more just to give him a little bit more of a spotlight just so he's sort of going to go here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw around that that spotlight just hiddledy piddledy so what I'm drawing is a scribbly scribbly line just around don't think about it too much and then I'm just going to add some little dashies just some little black and white dashies I think I need my glasses on just to add some little dashies here and there just around just to give it another little detail and it's great because what you want with your journal is you, you still want the fun of the layers and the detail but you don't want to make it too bulky one of my other journals is very bulky but with this being a little bit of a smaller journal it can't be quite as bulky so i'm just being more aware of that let me just lift that up for you just so that you can see we've just got these little little dashes in here just to give it a little bit more detail and my crow is sort of going to sit here so just so you can see that we're just going to move that on one side at the moment and I've gone ever so hot. Standard practice for me, standard. Let's move it. Oh, Tracy, stop fatting. I've moved things around and I shouldn't have bothered because it's just mad right what i'm going to do then is i'm going to take my twisted citron distress oxide ink and i'm just going to apply my ink direct to my card and then what i'm going to do is I'm going to take my worded petals and what I'm going to do is open the window so just bear with me just so we can let some air right so I'm going to use this leaf stamp here I think this is lovely just on the let's put it against some white card think that is a lovely leaf just to use so I'm going to use that let's grab my acrylic block and I've added my green it means I don't have to think about coloring too much because I just want a touch of color in there slight over inking so just to add that touch of color Now, I don't know whether I want one or whether I want more, but we'll decide that later. Now, you saw me swipe the Distress Oxide down on the card. So because I've swiped that, I've not spritzed with water, it's got a thick, chalky layer on that card. So I'm going to need to block that or dry with the heat tool because it's no longer porous because I've added that layer of oxide so it means that the ink has got nowhere to soak in so it lies on the surface of your card so just make sure that you give that a blot or give it a dry with your heat tool and you know what I'm going to do now because I can't be doing with a big piece of card so let's make this card smaller we go just because it's easier to handle and not every journal page has to be hours and hours 
in length. You know, if you just want to create a simple journal page, then you can create a simple journal page. You know, it, it doesn't always have to be anything too complicated. The hardest bit about this is probably cutting out the leaf. But I do think for this page, it's worth it because it brings in that touch of, of green and it gives something for the bird to sort of nestle in. So just, obviously, if you don't want to use the leaf, you could use a flower that it can nestle in. No problem at all. All you need to be aware of is that the ink is going to stay wetter longer on this kind of surface unless you dry it with the heat tool and blot it. You just need to be aware of that because that, that oxide makes it that it's, so it's no longer a porous surface. So we'll just cut that out. I actually love this leaf as well with bouquets of flowers. So it works beautifully if you want a set of flowers and then you want to add a leaf. Well, this one works beautifully with the flowers that I've designed. Works really nicely. Let's just... And let's just cut that out properly, Tracy. Because it's against that green background. I didn't see that very well. There we go. Just so that's cut out a little bit better. And this will just add a little bit more texture and a little bit of a layered element, but without adding too much bulk. We don't want it to add too much bulk to our page. So we're going to bring in that page. And what I'm thinking is we're just going to add the leaf so that the crow has got something to sort of rest under. Now, if you want to add another leaf, it's entirely up to you. I'm just wondering whether if I've got one there, I've got one there and I want one there. See, I quite like this, the single leaf. I like it that it's not too overcrowded. Not everything has to be too overcrowded all the time. But I quite like that, that it's not too overcrowded. Now, am I happy with the crow there? You see, what I do now is before I stick anything down, because I know I want to add another element, let's just put that leaf back. Just bring that in. And you've got so many images to choose from. It's hard to know what to use because you could even use that flower to put nestle the bird inside. Uh, what was I just going to go for then? the crow can you tell poor brain cells there's no hope for me really is there so what i'm going to do is just bring in these other elements that are on the crow let's just move that out the way just tear this piece of card and let's bring in this green again and let's bring in these other elements that are on the crow And we can bring them into the grey. Grey? Grey? We can bring them into the green element. There we go. And again, you need to block that because you've stamped it onto that oxide ink. So you just need to give it a bit of a, a blot. Look how much ink, let me just show you that. Look how much ink there comes off that from blotting it. Because you're not, you're no longer on a porous surface. So if I go to a clean area now and blot again, this is how wet the VersaFine Clairs stay. Look how much ink is on there. That's how wet the VersaFine Clair stays. So you need to blot or you need to make sure that you dry it with your heat tool. So I'm going to cut this out. And 
and again I'm using these as like my embellishment pieces just to give a little bit of an embellishment to my design so I want to see the word crow just so that you can see it so I'm just creating a little cluster so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my little crow but I'm not going to stick him down too much just so that so I've got the adhesive on there and what I'm going to do is just place my crow now I'm not going to I'm not pressing that down just until I decide where this piece is going can't decide whether I'm tucking it under a little bit or now I'm going to tuck it under a little bit like so let me just check so push that up so you can see I've not added I've not pressed down now I'll press the crow down just to make sure that adhesive sticks and I'm using the clean side of the copier paper just to make sure that we've got that stuck down. So now I can add my leaf so that I can still see the crow element just underneath. But before I do that, let's just put the lid on the adhesive. Let's grab my trusty ink tense pencil and let's just add a little bit of ink tense pencil just just below these circles here just to give a little bit of shading maybe a little bit under that circle there and a little bit here at the side just to give a little bit of shading just as a touch of that water we can just blend that out Just sort of blend the colour out. Just blend a little bit. There. And just a little bit on this side. Just so that it looks like we've got a bit of shading. Just at the back of there. Let's wipe that up so we don't get in a mess. And I'm just going to add this so that I can still see the crow word. So I'm going to add the adhesive to my leaf. And really you just need a few dots on. It's only a fine, fine leaf so you don't need too much on. And you can get it in the right place before you press it down, before you press that, make sure you're working with some clean paper. You don't want to mess your page up. And the heat from rubbing will just get that to adhere. Just so that you can see that, let me just show you. You can just see the crow just in there, always lovely. Now, what I need to do is just add a little bit more stamping because you've got this very black bird here. And for me, I don't want it to jar against the background. So what I'm going to do is take the crow text. This has got some crow text. And I'm going to ink that up and add a little bit of the crow text, just just randomly around my page, I will. Just love, I love the touch of black. It just means that the crow isn't just sitting there. It doesn't look like it's just been plonked. And then going to add this here 
just to give me some balance. So I've got the crow here, I've got it here, and I might just extend that stamping a little bit more. Now let's do it a little bit more random and just add it so that, he, that it does come to the end of the page as well. So just so that you see, you've got it here and then it, it extends and flows up here. So it just sort of gives me some lovely balance. I think what I'll just do is just add a little bit down here. Just a little bit of text just to extend that. That is lovely. You see, I like it so much now. I'm just going to extend it a little bit further. Just a little bit up here. There we go. Love that. I love stamps like this. Just so that we can add that. Then what we'll do is we'll just add some splatters so they can be drying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, let's move that out of the way. I'm going to take the Distress Oxide. The twisted citron. I'm just going to spritz that with water and then I'm going to load my brush and then I'm going to add some flicks of that distress oxide just to my page just to add a few delicate flicks just to the page and while I cut the other element out, that can be drying. So I'll just place that on one side. Just lift that so that you can see we've got some splatters on there. So we'll just place that on one side. Let's just wipe that up just so that we don't get any total mess. I've buried my kitchen roll. I always bury the kitchen roll. I think I've finished with this one at the moment. And what I'm going to do is use one of my newer stamps, which is the Tagged Alphabet. I absolutely love this Tagged Alphabet. I love it because it's so versatile. I can add just one, one alphabet letter or I can use it as a background stamp, but also it's got some sentiments on there as well. So I'm obviously going to use the C for the crow. Just love these. I, I definitely don't need an acrylic block that big. Just grab a little A7 acrylic block. Let's grab some white card. Okay. We're going to stamp that in the black. And it's great because I can just use any scraps of card that I want to with this. Okay. You see, there's so many sentiments to use. This one's got be authentic, one of a kind, live for today, live your dream and celebrate today. So it's got a lot of sentiments on there. But you see, I'm thinking of using one of a kind or on this stamp set, there's wild and free. So it's up to you which stamp set you want to use. So there's so many possibilities. So let's just cut out the crow, the C for the crow. And it's up to you if you want to add a touch of ink. I'm going to see how it looks in the stark white. because I'll probably keep my sentiment in the stark white. Or you could, you know, add it with white embossing um, on black card. So. Just 
just lift that leaf a bit because I'm going to put the you can either put the C there so that it stays in the cluster or you could add it at the back of the leaf but I like it here with my little cluster just to add it with the little cluster because it just echoes the cluster and the flow and then we'll add our sentiment and I'm going to keep that touch of white because there's actually white in the background of the crow so I'm just going to keep that just bring that down a little touch like so That, that will be absorbent. I'm just rubbing with the copier paper just so that I can get that to grab good adhesion. Now I'm going to use my sentiments. Now on this stamp set, because I wanted to cram more in, they all come as one, but you can actually cut them apart if you wish, just so this, they're individual sentiments. So I want one of a kind, which is the bottom one. So I can just ink the bottom sentiment, one of a kind. And I do think this crow is definitely one of a kind. A bit like me, really. There we go. So you can cut them sentiments apart to make it easy for yourself. I'm just using my bigger scissors just to cut that out. I find it easier with a, a bigger pair of scissors. So. The cutting at the end there could have been a tad better, I have to say. That's better. Now it's deciding where you want to put it on your page. You see, instantly I like it here because it sort of echoes the white here. You could put it here, which also looks quite nice because it echoes the balance here. For me, it still looks quite balanced there, but it looks very balanced there because you've got this diagonal and it works quite nicely in my, when I look at it with my eyes. Obviously, we all see things differently when we look at things. So don't worry if something jars for you, then you do it in a different way. But for me, that works beautifully. Just going across like that. But to be fair, both ways would work. Just give that. I have to say, the black stamping of the crow element, I adore. I absolutely adore this stamping and I think he would look nice just in black and white you know I think he'd look lovely in black and white well it is black and white now but what I mean is a total page of black and white I think that'd look lovely so I'm just going to add a little bit of shading just let's take some of that off just some shading there and let's add some shading at the bottom of the sentiment one of a kind have you noticed I'm not adding it all the round all the way round I'm just going to add it can you see that I'm just going to add it at the bottom just so it looks like it's got a shadow at the bottom just blend that out a little bit and my brush isn't too wet I don't want a soaking wet brush. Just doesn't work for me if it's too soaking wet. What I'm going to do then is add some white splatters. Just pump my pen a little bit, just so that it gives me a few more white splatters, just around him a little bit more. 
There we go. I'm then just going to grab a little touch of washi tape. What I like about this size journal is it reminds me of creating a card, but I can keep this as a reference, but it does remind me of, of creating a card because of that size. Now I'm just going to see whether I want it. Just at the top here. And I'm not going to wrap it round my journal page because I don't want it to go on the next page. So let's just add a little bit more. Way that, that ripped nicely. Doesn't normally go that nicely for me. And I'm sort of going to add a little bit here. Let's just tear that because I don't want to I don't want to add it to the back of my page. Normally I just wrap it round for a card, as you well know. I'll just There we go. And I've got a word there that I want to use that's on the washi. And I'm just going to add a little bit more. And then there's a word just perfect here that says powerful. And I'm going to add that just at the bottom here, just as part of the torn washi. There we go. And that black here gives that pop, gives that life, and also echoes the, the dominant black that's in the centre here. So it looks more thought about. And I absolutely love that as a page. I just think it's gorgeous. I think there's one thing we could just do. I do think that he needs a little bit of shading just underneath there just so that we can add a little bit of shadow just under the beard just so he's got a little bit of shadow over there and I think what I'm going to do is pump my pen just a little bit just to get some dominant that's better, much better. Dominant splatters. That's better. I just want some more dominant splatters. Right, that is our page finished. And if I just tilt on one side, you can see the shadows. You can see the stenciling. That black stamping, but you can also see the stamping with the beard text at the bottom. See that shadow underneath the bird, just so that you can see that. And I absolutely love it. Absolutely love that page. And what it means is, I've got this page now at the top. I can perhaps do the same colour scheme, but with some different birds. I could do, my next page might be purples and browns. But you would never know that this came from the previous page. Because we've got ink here as well. So I hope you enjoy that and I hope you enjoy creating it and I hope you enjoy the simple processes. So thank you very much everybody for joining me and thank you everybody who leaves a comment. It really is much appreciated. So love to all, have a wonderful week and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.